Hey guys, this is Real Appalachia with Melody. And Shane, and today we were on our way to Dank, but we thought we'd stop here. A place called Hamlin. Yes. In front of the Hamlin General Store. And I absolutely just love this little building. The, the, the uh, sign's still up here. Yeah, very cute. Enjoy. I wish that it could have been restored. It yeah. looks like it's in pretty rough shape, but very cute anyways. Oh yeah, I'm sure it brings back a lot of memories for a lot of people. I took I'm a picture. I'm sure. I took a picture from here several years ago that did really well on social media, so. Yeah. It was a little bit more edited. Mm -hmm. and I'll be able to do it this, but you still get your <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on the road, what do you say? Okay. Clean it better. I'm trying, boss, I'm trying. You missed the spot. Oh my gosh. Do it better. Oh put some gosh. elbow grease into it, Shane. <laughs> my God. <laughs> I don't know why I put up with you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're descending into Bunch Town mm -hmm. here in Daint, Virginia. And don't call it Dante. Dante. It you, is not Dante. It is a Daint. Daint, but you'll see CSX over the hill. That's a. Love it's, seeing all those trains. Yeah. Not parked, but love seeing all the trains. It used to be a major stop for Clinchfield. Yeah. CSX is one of the people who was hence taking them over, but. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're going into Bunch Town right now. Down. We are going into Bunkstown. And Daint was a major, major player. I mean, it was a massive, and we still hear from people all the time from this area that have moved away and still have a very mm -hmm. strong connection and affection because it was just a great town to grow up in from what I've been told. Mm -hmm. And so learning in the museum that in the 20s, was it, that the population was around 6,000? Yeah, I mean, it's massive. Yeah, and so the 2010 census for Dayton was 649, but they were saying in there they think now it's probably less than 500. So to so. think that it's 10% of the population that it used to be. <sighs> that that's, that's is mind-blowing. It yeah. is, and you can't, when you look at it, it just looks like, oh, how would it ever have more people than that? But mm -hmm. you just notice with the pictures and all that stuff, a lot of these buildings have been torn down, burned, or otherwise demolished for some other reason, so. Yeah, and there was just an explosion here because of coal seams. Yeah. Um, the mine ex coal mine and explosion here in town. Well, I guess that sounds bad, it's, but, <laughs> but the, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the town exploded Wait, because of coal mines. <laughs> and um, they were saying how much Hungarian population they had. I read that there were immigrants from Germany, um, Hungary, Greece, Poland, and all kinds of other European countries. The so, Union Baptist Church in front of us. I want to mention that, but yes. Yes, and this is Hospital Holler. Hospital Holler. So this hospital is where used the hospital be. was. Long gone, unfortunately. And got a cool picture. The old hospital. Yeah, we'll show that old for pictures. you. So, yeah, that would be cool to show. And getting up here and it gets a little bit rougher. And here's, hey, what do you know, a holler with gravel roads. So yes. People are going to be very happy about this. Oh, yeah. Very neat. And guess what? Water running right along it. And if all goes well, there'll be a dog in the middle of this road at some point. <laughs> we can, or somebody raising chickens. I'll, either one's acceptable, but hopefully both. Or both, yeah. I see a uh, dog house ahead of us. It looks like maybe so. That's, we've got a good chance. Yeah. I wish I got my fingers crossed because one of these days we're going to put all the holler factors together in one yes, neat package. We will check all of the boxes on Shane's holler list. Yeah. I actually don't think that this is a holler. I think this is somebody's drive. <laughs> yeah, I believe we ran out of real estate here. And we might get, <laughs> this might be one of those times where we wish we didn't we didn't come so far. But. Well, we've just gotten turned around. Yeah. Well, we're going to turn around. Yes. Uh oh. <laughs> There's people outside. Alright. Bye. People are friendly. That's alright. Yeah. You just wave at them and show them that you don't mean any harm and they're good. Yeah, everybody like them. Good people. They have a beautiful house. I love that house. It's that cute. Good. Yeah, but this is a holler. It's a small holler. <clears throat> small holler in mm -hmm. one house. Kind of hard to believe the hospital was up here one time. And, and, I know it is, but it looked like a pretty big hospital too, which it was like one story, but I mean, I guess that made sense before elevators. Don't want people yeah. run, running sick people up and down steps or nothing. Absolutely not. <clears throat> so, do you know what the original name of Daint was? 
Well, I'm ch cheated, so I looked this up earlier and said it was in... Well, was pretend. It okay, pretend I don't know? <laughs> yeah, pretend you don't know. I, I have no idea. I want to no. surprise Melody, you. Melody, please tell me what it was called. It was turkey foot. What? Yes, because it was the confluence of the uh, rivers, or confluence of hollers here. Yeah. Sorry. I thought it was rivers, okay. but it didn't look like a turkey foot. So, there you go. Pretty neat, right? Yeah. So it was originally settled, but then when the coal mining industry come into town, they renamed it Dante. All right, not Dante. Not Dante. The Clinchfield Coal Company come through this area, come to Turkey Foot, and renamed it Dante. Um, and the coal company built pretty much every home and structure in Dante. It was in its prime in the 30s, um, and it was the largest town in Russell County, which is my Dain home county. Dink General Store, by the way, I want to mention that. And here's the yes. Old Depot, uh, and new welcome to the Dink sign. I like that, nice new one. welcome sign, that's nice. Yeah, they've been supposed to do something with the depot for years and years and years, and nothing's really gotten done with it. They stripped it down, but yeah. Hopefully. see a coal miner's memorial on the left, and yeah, a nice little playground. Quick, just to show you that. Yes. Pretty nice. Nice little playground, too. They used to have this memorial up at the old volunteer fire department, and they've moved it, uh, which, look by the looks of the volunteer fire department, I don't know if that's even operational anymore, it didn't look like, but... Yeah. So it makes sense to move it down here, and it's pretty up this park. Yeah. This is a new development since I've been here last, I do believe. Mm-hmm. So, I did like that. Be back on the road. Yes. Well, and as we turn, that will give a good little shot of the post office. Yeah. Out right there with the... American flag. Yeah, and if you saw my interview, I met a lady that worked in that office back when it was Clinchfield Cole's offices. She worked in the accounting department. I was talking about what a good place that was to work. Mm -hmm. And for you know, for coal companies, I know they get bad reps and names and stuff. But, but for coal companies, consol I mean, uh, Clinchfield had a really good reputation. Yeah, it seems like it. That's why we've heard. Well, I see that there's a lot more nostalgia about these kinds of towns when they had the bigger coal operations that did better by their employees. And so. Yeah. Yeah. And Clinchfield Coal Company was formed by George Carter. Um, he was a major part of East Tennessee State University, yes. too, my alma mater. So, pretty cool. Yeah, I think we'll head to Straight Holler. Let's head there. Um, he was also credited with the formation of the Clinchfield Railroad, which makes sense. Clinchfield Coal and Clinchfield Railroad kind of goes hand in hand, huh? Yeah, and he, oddly enough, he lived in Colwood, West Virginia, where Homer Hickam and all that was from. Awesome. And he had a house there at one point, which is pretty cool to know. He had he traveled a lot of these same circles. Yeah. He had his hand in a lot of things around through here, so his name is very well thought of here. Yes. So Seems we're like it. rolling into Straight Holler here. And it was just one of the many great residential areas. And it's funny, but kind of looking at that old aerial photo, it seems like it was named because it was actually Straight Holler. Like, it seemed pretty straight. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty neat. Yeah, they weren't overly creative with those, were they? Like, I'm assuming the sawmill <laughs> holler was with a sawmill up there. And yeah. Bear Waller, well, you know, well, the funny thing about Bear Waller, and I'll tell that one what is it? That's the first time my life I ever saw a bear out in the wild. Was I was driving through bear, past Bear Waller. Oh my gosh, that's funny. And well, the road it must have been uh, common for bear sightings, and that makes sense. Well, I stopped to look at it, and it stopped and looked back at me, and I thought, well, that thing's going to charge me. <laughs> it's like I started moving on. <laughs> but yeah, here's Straight Holler Road right here. Straight Holler. And if you're looking for the water, a holler on how to have water beside it, I guess. To be, you know, it seems like I don't know that ain't necessarily true, but the hard water is actually to the right behind these houses. I guess early settlement, though, that they would um, build houses along the water to have easy water access, though, yeah. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. the type of thing you about just makes such sense. a necessity, so. Yeah. So, going on with the history, um, the vice president of operations for Clinchfield Coal Company was a man named Lee Long, and Apparently, he really helped grow Dane into what it was um, at its peak. So, he's credited for a lot of things with the town. And also, he had a hand in the brakes 
reserve and reforestation. Um, so they added 130, 100 acres, 130,000 acres um, of for Breaks Interstate Park. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, we ran into a dead end, and through the miracle of editing, you didn't have to suffer with us turning around and my driving challenges. Yes. <laughs> so, I correct myself, too, because um, I read some different information, but I wanted to look it up. It seemed like it would make more sense that it was called Turkey Foot because of a river or water instead of haulers, because if it wasn't settled yet, they wouldn't have had the haulers, really. Yeah. So. Anyways, it was. It was the three branches of Lick Creek that formed distinct toes, like a turkey foot. So, that's why it was named Turkey Foot, and it was established by the Phillips family. So, then after the Civil War, farmers started selling off the land to a coal company, and that's how it became Dane. So, anyways, so I was just correcting myself there. Which is kind of close, too, because <laughs> most of your haulers run along the side of a certain creek. Or exactly, something. yeah. So... I guess it still looks like a turkey foot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and this is your typical, you know, coal camp type. A lot of these houses are built on the same floor plan now. They're in various conditions. as yes. is normal because, you know, they were built a long, long, long time ago. And some people took better care. And some of them fell into ruin or got burned or, you know, bad things happen. Who knows? But that's mm -hmm. kind of, you know, varying conditions. And you see this in every single coal camp in, in the yes. world. And this was one of the largest coal communities in Southwest Virginia, too. So, um, it employed about 4,000 people at its peak. Wow. Yeah, crazy. pretty crazy to think, huh? Yeah. Um, Daint was named Daint because of the business associate that he had, uh, William Daint. I guess that they pronounce his name Daint instead of Dante, too. I think so. Or if that's just their good. Appalachian accent. Well, we just had to pull in and show you this tent. I'm not red, white, and blue. It's patriotic. I'm not sure what it's for. I think it's a little bit creepy looking. I was thinking <laughs> haunted house. But actually, I see, um, t um, gosh, seats in there. So I wonder if it was like a tent revival. Could be. I don't yeah. know. But that would be great to see. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're passing sawmill holler and we will show that one more detail in another video yes so that's somebody screaming at you didn't show it ain't you know yes but for now we're going to pass through the major part of the downtown area i guess for lack of a better word yeah okay we made a stop here at the bank pole and railroad museum thought we give you a look around here what i'm told this was at one time the bank yes and then over here they got this great mural it says coal our history our heritage mm -hmm. you can see the clinchfield the train going through here and this is once a major hub of the railroad yeah and then here to the right or straight in front of you on the camera to our right is where the old offices were for clinchfield coal okay and then i think the post office is down there now and a few other things and then there's a little park but really pretty downtown area yeah it is love it oh well, we here to dank museum the coal museum mm -hmm. looking around they got some examples of the old Lumps of coal there from Moss Mine, Mead Mine, Daint Number Two Mine, Clinch Co. Number Nine Mine. Got a bunch of pictures to capture the history here. So yes, they're so cool to see. We'll ride up some of these streets here. Of course, the name George Lafayette Carter, very prominent in the coal, had a major hand in developing Clinchfield, and also had a hand in developing and how ETSU. Cool is that picture of them on the horses there. Oh yeah. <laughs> It just looks like from an old West movie or something. Oh, yeah. Back in the glory days here, this was a boom town. A true boom town. It really was. And then they have the Clinchfield team, the Dank Baseball. And a picture of all the hollers here. The Sawmill Holler, Bunch Town, Lower Bear Waller. Straight Hollow. Straight Holler. Cigarette Holler. I say Hollow. I know. I'm what, just reading it. Where are you from? <laughs> Holler. All right, where are you from? That's what they call a possum light here. My, I got my dad's. Got all kinds of memorabilia here. An old dinner bucket.
and they sell ornaments here too from a lot of the buildings from the past. This is this year's ornament. And that's the original cash register from, did you say the store? Clinchfield? Yeah, I think so. All kinds of memorabilia. It's about everything you want to see. I love the little model town back here, too. Yeah, I'll get a good shot of that. So some of these dinner buckets. Some of the railroad. This is a major stop along the railroad, too. And just like you were talking about, man, I love these kinds of things. I like to have that in my house. I know, I love these. It shows what Dan was like in the glory days. Yes. Well, all these buildings are gone now. And I was happy to see this one. It's got the S&S &S on there from part of my family's business there. Known for their scoops. It's like some coal art there. Yeah. Somebody local do, do those? Yeah, we buy them from Kentucky. From Kentucky? Kentucky Crafts. Kentucky Crafts. Mm -hmm. Did they have a high school here at one time? Oh, yeah. What, what was it called? Dane High School? Dane General. Dane General. We had, it close. we had a straight home school. They went to the sixth, seventh grade one. Mm -hmm. And everything came down here for high school. Yeah. It was the school in Salmon Holler. This was on one in Barrow. Okay. So that many people. You said about 6,000 people one time? 6,000. My goodness. Yeah. Oh, it burned down, didn't it? Our high school burned down. Oh. Okay. Oh, they built one of those Oh, okay. We ran about 48 or 49. Yeah, because we all, I was already in school, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. So wasn't there a bond explosion down here at some point, maybe? Yeah, we had a couple. Couple. Uh -huh. I was thinking I read that somewhere. Oh yeah, There's six. A paper up over there. Six nine eight mine disaster. Yeah. We had a bunch of Hungarians here to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. We had out of nationality a lot, I think. Yeah. So this really was the Great American Melting Pot, wasn't it? Yeah, you had. We were. Everybody, they just worked together and got along, I guess, didn't Yeah, they? everybody did. We were talking a while ago. Used to, you know, you could go to each other's houses and just walk in. And, yeah. And we had a friend. Her husband was uh, worked with us in the museum. And, everyone, and she worked in St. Paul, and every once in a while she would need something from her house, and she would come and say, just run it out of my house and get it. Yeah. I want to run to your house and get it. Yeah, I'm just go and get it, you know. Yeah. You know, she never thought nothing about it. I thought a lot about it because I didn't like going in her house, but yeah, but I did go in several times. Get things have changed, haven't they? Yeah. One time we were having a every year in August we have a thing reunion. Yeah. For everybody that wants to come, and we have a whole list of names of people that were here that had moved up, moved away. Yeah. And we always send them letters, and a bunch of them come. Oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, we've had as many as 600 people come. To wow. Them. What's the thing? Okay. We got a social media and stuff, and they, anytime we post anything about Daint, people from Michigan, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they moved far and wide, but they didn't forget the roots. You know? That's yeah. right. They still they feel connected. They yeah. still know. And you. they still miss it. Mm -hmm. And I love that. You know, it just shows you it's a good place to live and good people. Yeah. Which Clinchfield was a pretty good company. Yeah, that was a good company, I thought. Because everybody else, else, for what it was, you know, for coal companies. My yeah. father and my grandfather all worked for the company. They did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
What was it like growing up here? Is it everybody happy or? Well, it was great. It was happy. It was clean. We didn't have all this trash. We didn't have all these weeds growing. Yeah. Of course, we had nowhere to play except on the hills and in the creeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happy we were all that. But you had each other to play with. Yeah. We grew up healthy, you know. They we had the coal mines and everything. They didn't face us. Yeah.
I don't know if everybody likes trains like I do or not. Yeah. I love them. But I was so sad when they cut the trains out. Yeah. yeah. See, the track used to come right at the corner of that concrete there. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, that was. Oh, yeah. Man. See, all over. You can look at the mall of your shelf how the tracks came. Real close to everything. Yeah, oh. I see that now that you mention it. I didn't even yeah. like mm -hmm. let it sink in though. Yeah. Wow. Anywhere you went, whatever you did, you had to cross the road track. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So we're really thrilled when the trains come through. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love trains too. I don't know the screen is yeah. the building we're in right now. I've always lived near trains and I said it's like a comfort kind of when you hear that train coming, it's just oh, like yeah. everything's still going in the world, you know? Yeah. When I grew up, the train went right up, right up in front of our house. So. Yeah. What was Christmas like back then? Fantastic. Was it? It really was. Did the coal company do stuff for families? And they did, and every year, <laughs> Clinchfield gave all his employees, their employees uh, slips, and all kids under 14 got a treat bag at, yeah. the, at the hotel. Oh, I would love that. And, it was crowded, too. Oh, yeah, you couldn't get through town at all. Oh, oh really? Man. It's, yeah, it's awful. Remember the big old, uh, the weather walk was big as this, almost as big as this floor here, and it was crowded, wasn't it? Yeah. You go up to there and get uh, uh -huh. treat your Santa Claus. Yeah. Oh, that's great. But that was great. Yeah. It really was, you know. Yeah. And uh, Clinchfield had decorated the store, and they had everything decorated so pretty. And yeah. Great big Christmas tree down on the lot at the hotel. Yeah. And a big tree. Yeah. Their really store was just a, 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 I think it's from Walmart or their model from us, from us, because we had a grocery store, a fried goods store, clothing store, furniture store, everything in that building. Just one place. Yeah. Right? Now I've heard people say that places had pretty high quality stuff too. Oh they? yes, like the top best. Of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've noticed some of the brands when I see old pictures, it's like that was as good as you could get. I have a bedroom suit at my house. Doesn't even have a scratch on it. Mm -hmm. It was bought in '42 from a company store down here. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I that's my uncle's. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I would love that. Yeah, he got out of service in '42 and got married and bought that bedroom suit. Oh, wow. And I wound up with it. That's amazing. They just don't make stuff like they used to. No, it is. Now, though. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's made in China now and oh, yeah. just cheap. Yeah, and it's not made to last like it was. Mm -mm. No. Nope. It lasted five years, you've been blessed. Exactly. Yeah. I was so and proud to get that bedroom suit because it didn't have a scratch on it or nothing. You know, my gracious sakes. And again, here's a little bit closer look at the mural. Coal, our history, our heritage. And then these road signs will be no stranger to anybody from here where it says Straight Holler, Bunchtown, and then Lower Bear Waller. So let's get on the road. What do you say? Let's do it. Got just a little bit more history here. Um, how Dank kind of saw its downfall was that it was never officially incorporated as a town, and so it kind of collapsed when the company closed the mines after World War II. So people just abandoned the town, abandoned their homes. Um, there was a theater here, a large hotel, it looked really nice. Um, hospital and it was just all torn down after years of deterioration so very very sad and that's kind of what's happened to the town here um, the original bank building has now the museum so it's really great that they've kept that they've worked to build up this general store which we're giving you a good front view of now so kind of get to see that um, I was also gonna say during the peak the different haulers were kind of broke off by ethnicities and also the level that they were in the coal company the, their status in the company so it's pretty neat right yeah. I guess a lot of haulers were like that though they did like the higher quality like the supervisors bosses row they used to come up with those and, yeah and then of course you know you'd have your black sections and your 
different yeah. Yeah. Small times, yeah yeah exactly so yeah that's kind of what happened with the town here but it's a uh, still a really cute town i think it's got good bones it good does structure. and it's got a lot of pride like i said the people that are from here love this place and mm -hmm. there's a lot of pride and connection that never goes away yeah so we thought it's very important to come and show you this i guess it was mentioned um in the museum to the high school that was in the middle of town it burned down so they moved that to castlewood and that's where these kids would go was castlewood which is in russell county I'm sure it's a um, sad day when that burned down too so yeah so many connections in there and some of the haulers actually had their own elementary schools they said that what straight hauler and saw saw mill saw, is it saw mill yeah. saw dust saw mill. <laughs> yeah they had their own schools they actually had a white school and a black school okay so it was divided up there a little bit like that too all right guys we hope you enjoyed this look at dank virginia i enjoyed my visit here didn't you? i did yes now this little town was steeped in coal history but it looks like they're looking at another industry for their future yes atv trails like so many other places in this area they're starting to use old um mine and railroad land to form atv trails to bring in outsiders so we actually saw a few today didn't we a couple Two yeah come yeah. through here so mm -hmm. hopefully that's having some success and we thought we would figure the perfect place to end this at was at that dank coleman miners memorial because like i said this is big big part yeah. of dank's history right here and some of you watching this may have background in Dane, may know some names on this memorial. It's what Shane was just talking about. Yeah, it's so. funny. I saw the name Joe Honto. It says Joe Honto Sr. I knew Joe Honto Jr. Who, I guess he passed away not too long ago. But Yeah. It makes it even more personal when you put names with and faces with names, I guess. Yeah. But. So. All right, guys. We hope you like this. and Thanks for coming along with us. Yes. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Comment, share it, tell your friends. And definitely subscribe so you don't miss out on another video. Including our videos of a couple more of these haulers up through here. Yes, check so, those out. Yes, they will be showed in the future or videos. So thank you. Yes, thanks guys.